Hi guys, welcome back to Why and Why with Med K. So this usually happens to me. I start reading a topic and I get distracted by another topic within the topic that I'm reading. I started reading more into vitamin B and it said vitamin B helps with metabolism. I was like, but how does it help with metabolism? And I was like, first of all, what is metabolism? So I started reading about metabolism and a few hours later, I realized I've read a lot about metabolism and I know about metabolism, but I still don't know what I was trying to learn about vitamin B. So that's what this video is about. I will come back to vitamin B, but today I want to talk about metabolism. What is it? What does it do? It's a word that we hear very often, but just as I did, many people don't really know exactly what it is. So let's talk about you and your metabolism. So I'm going to divide this metabolism topic into two videos because it's been a long time since I learned anything about metabolism in biochemistry and so I forgot it's a very big and broad subject. So I'm going to try and break down the basics of metabolism in these two videos. I will just start with the basics. What is metabolism? And simply put, metabolism is a bunch of chemical reactions and these chemical reactions are the ones that keep us alive so metabolism is the sum it's just all those chemical reactions together so metabolism is divided into two different parts one is known as catabolism and the other one is known as anabolism when I was in med school and I was trying to figure out the differences between these two I came up with my own little analogy and it probably won't work for everyone but it's worked for me. Catabolism is the same as if you put a cat on a bomb and it explodes, it blows up the cat into lots of different pieces. I know it's not very ideal but it just makes sense because this is what catabolism is. It's when your body takes bigger pieces, bigger molecules and breaks them down into smaller ones. And anabolism is when your body takes smaller pieces and puts them and makes them into bigger pieces. So let's talk about catabolism. So this is the process where we make energy and part of this process is what we put in our bodies. To make energy, we need nutrients. From macronutrients, this is the proteins, carbohydrates and lipids and the micronutrients, different things like minerals and vitamins, they are all needed to produce energy. Our body takes them in and along with oxygen and a few other things, it goes through a very complicated and confusing process known as the Krebs cycle. And through the Krebs cycle, it breaks all these different things down and it produces energy. And it's known as ATP. So this is pure energy. Along with this process, there's also other things which are produced. Heat is also produced carbon dioxide is produced so this is what we breathe out carbon dioxide that's produced through this process and also there's other different um, waste products that are produced which are taken care of by parts of our body such as the liver and the kidneys but now we have ATP that's the energy that we need the next part which is anabolism this is where it's used in every function that you can think of so mainly for the functions that we're not really in control of, such as your breathing, your heart beating, your kidneys filtering, children growing, your hair growing. There's so many things that we are not in control of that our body does and they all require energy. So let's say, for example, your hair growing. You need to build up the parts that grow your hair. So you need to take different parts with the energy and put them together and create the hair or the proteins that make your hair. And also for the processes that we're aware of, such as moving. So just you getting up and walking to the bathroom. And I talk with my hands a lot. So all of this movement with my hands requires energy. So it requires that ATP and a bunch of other things to be put together to allow me to move my arms. And also for exercise. So when you're exercising, you're moving your body. That comes from ATP, the energy that's being produced and other parts of your body working together. So this is in very short metabolism. It's the production of energy and the using of that energy and all the chemical reactions that come together to make that happen. 
and actually most of our metabolism works to just keep us alive so all those things that you're not in control of like your breathing your brain working and all the different functions that are going on inside you most of your metabolism goes towards making sure that keeps happening and you might have heard the word basal metabolic rate so this is the minimum amount of energy that your body needs to keep you alive so if you're at rest you're not really moving anywhere there's still a lot of energy being used so that means there's a constant metabolism going on in your body even when you're not actively doing anything so we hear the word metabolism in lots of different products people say if you take this it's going to increase your metabolism it's going to help you lose weight it's going to make sure your metabolism is fast and all those different things in the next video i'm going to discuss why some of these are not true and with the information we've learned about metabolism today you can start to question some of these things that you hear about metabolism and weight gain and weight loss because our body is very sophisticated in what it does and a lot of these products don't even really affect the metabolism in the way that people say they do so next week i'll continue talking about really what is the truth and what are the myths when it comes to metabolism and weight gain and weight loss so thank you so much for taking your time to listen to this and i'll see you next time bye